Hey guys, this is Jim K in 4YCD and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Today I wanted to show you the Venlab Digital Multimeter model VM600A. This was sent to me by Venlab for review on this channel. Uh, this meter is about $35 on Amazon and there's an affiliate link below if you're interested in it. This meter is a standard size uh, digital multimeter. I've already opened the box and, and played with the meter. The contents of the box are a manual and the meter and cables and we'll hit all those in a second. The manual is a typical manual. It says don't you know, use this in the bathtub and that kind of thing. A nice picture with a description of all the different inputs, knobs, buttons, so forth and what they're for. And then we have a description of all the functions and the buttons that actually show us how to use the meter. Uh, the different measurements that we can do. So this particular meter does DC voltage, resistance, diodes, continuity, capacitance, uh, frequency, duty cycle, DCAC current, non-contact voltage, and temperature measurement. And then here in the back of the manual we have all the different ranges and the specs for each of the functions that the meter supports um, for all of those functions. And that's it. And uh, some basic maintenance tips. And then the meter goes into, I assume, Chinese. I can't read that. So that's our manual. <clears throat> and actually, as far as manuals go, this is pretty decent. Uh, it says what it needs to say. So here's our meter. And I, like I said, I've already had this out of the box. I've put batteries in it. The meter comes with a temperature probe cable. And it comes with, of course, our test probes, a couple of spare fuses for the current measurement circuits. And then, uh, and we're going to move the box out of the way. And these are Cat 3 10 amp probes rated at uh, 1000 volts input. More about that amp rating in a minute. So the meter itself is pretty straightforward. It does have an auto off that shuts it off after about 15 minutes. And you can see here, the way this meter works is uh, we just turn the knob to whatever function. That also turns the meter on. If it times out and shuts off, you need to bring it back to off to reset it. Um, here we can change our functions uh, or hold, depending on what function we're doing with the meter. This is for our hertz, our frequency measurements. Um, range and then here is for our backlight and it also has a flashlight if we press and hold that. Up here on top is the flashlight LED <clears throat> and then this uh, little dingus sticking up right here is going to be for our non-contact voltage testing. On the back we have the standard setup for a multimeter to hold your probes <clears throat> so they're safely out of the way and with the little um, shields on them you also won't poke yourself because those are fairly sharp. The meter has uh, a key hook, keyhole hook, whatever you want to call that, that you could hang the meter on a hook or a nail or a screw or whatever. And then these are also magnetic, so you can also magnet it to the side of, you know, whatever you're working on. And that works as well. Of course, it also has a bail, which holds the meter up at a very pleasant angle. So let's turn the meter on. And the first thing we'll do is test temperature. The meter defaults to centigrade. You can change it, but when you turn it off, it is going to change back to centigrade. There we go. And so these two connectors go in on the common and the voltage port, like so. And it's reading the ambient temperature out here in the shop. And uh, that looks about right. Doesn't feel super cold out here. And when I hold it in my hot little hands, you can see the temperature creeping upwards. So that works quite well. If we take our probes and hook them in, let's pull them over here. Of course, that goes in the common. That goes in the voltage section. Let's change over to voltage. Um, this will auto range. As you can see here, it says auto range. And then we also can, can set our range down into the millivolt range if we want to. Those ranges are covered in the manual, and if you were going to use this 
where you don't know what the voltage is, obviously you should probably set it higher. So I have my bench power supply over here and we're gonna take a quick reading and take a look at it. Power supply is set to nine volts if I hit the button right. And that's what we got is nine volts. Sorry about that glare. So nine volts DC, that works great. Let's do a quick AC check. So here we should be able to hit function and change over to AC. I have a wall power socket right here on the edge of the bench. If I get the probes in there, then we go. Uh, you can see we have 123.2 uh, volts AC coming out. I will say, and this is not particular to this meter, the auto range function works. It seems to be a little bit of a, a slow poke sometimes getting to the correct range. It kind of has to go through a little bit of, of setting. And I've seen that on multiple meters. I use a different meter and it kind of does the same thing. So the auto ranging function works. It's just a little, a little bit of a slow poke. So we'll change back to DC voltage. All right. So we can also test capacitance. I'm going to flip it over to the capacitance mode. Okay, so I've got this set up on my capacitance test board, and this is set to um, 100 microfarads right now, and we're reading 98.13, and it shows microfarad. So there is no range on this. I cannot change the range. It auto ranges only on capacitance, and again, that slowness when you're changing values. Um, kind of comes into play. It takes it a second to adjust itself and figure out where it's going. And then I've also got, to be fair, I also have uh, leads connected to uh, alligator clip leads, so that's going to add some capacitance, change the capacitance value anyway. So that works fine. In resistance mode, we have um, the display up here that shows us what it is, and then it's auto. And we have three functions on this setting. So we have continuity, resistance, and diode check. Uh, and right now we're on resistance, so we'll hook this up to our resistance substitution box. And I've done a video on this. This is great for whipping up little test circuits. And we're set to 330 and we're reading 326 ohms. If I change over to the kilo ohm setting, and we're set over here to 10k ohms, you can see we're reading 9.87k. And as I change this up, the range changes, so there's 47k, 68k, and it's um it's actually a lot faster on the resistance changing than it is on the capacitance changing. All right, so let's disconnect that and let's set up another test. This also does in this mode. This does a frequency. Oh, excuse me, wrong button. There we go. This does frequency. It says hertz right there. So we can plug this into our AC power socket and determine that we're on 60 hertz power. All right, work. Okay, so we're set up to do current tests now and I've got the meter set on the milliamp range and you can hard set the range here, microamp, milliamp, amps. And the way this connects up is to the milliamp port or the straight amp port. 600 and below milliamps, you use the milliamp port. Anything over 600, you need to use the 20 amp port. All right, so I'm using our resistance substitution box. I have this little LED circuit set up. That's why we needed some resistance. And all we need to do now is hook our two meter probes in line and we should be able to read the current. Our circuit is pulling and our lights on, so the circuit's working. And there we go, 21.14 milliamps of current. You can see that right there. And the other thing we want to look at is non-contact voltage on the meter. So we switch, let's move him back to the voltage range. That doesn't matter. I just did it to move it over there. This is our non-contact voltage tester. So we change to the NCV setting on the meter. And then this is a standard power plug, computer style power plug, NEMA110P that's hooked into the wall. And we get an audible alarm and a visual cue also that we have power. Now it doesn't show you the voltage, but it does tell us non-contact voltage and annoyingly beeps like so. 
Um, we can also do continuity with this. I don't have any diodes at hand to test, but the continuity mode works like so uh, once I move it to continuity. And now we have continuity mode right there because we have a little speaker symbol. And as you can tell, we have an audio and visual cue that we have continuity. And that's a, I'm sure you can hear it, a very loud beeper on the meter. So that is the functions of the Venlab VM600A meter. I have to say I'm very pleased with this meter. I think this is a solid product. The build quality on it is excellent. It feels very solid. It has a sturdy um, rubberized case that goes around the meter itself to protect the innards from an accidental fall or whatever. So that's excellent. And it feels good in the hand and it fits well. Guys, that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you would. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new content. Thanks a lot, y'all. 73.